as well. I just wanted to let you know that uh, all of you that have registered, the email that was used in the registration should have received two documents, two PDF documents. One was a summary of all the biographies of the candidates. And the second was a summary of the series of questions and candidate answers. The questions were provided by the various presidents of the resident associations and members. And the intent of that was just for you to get a bit more detail on some of the subjects from various candidates. The scheduled time to wrap up is nine. We hope to have you out of here sooner than that. Um, and this has specifically not been called a debate because we collectively felt that with uh, eight candidates, it really wasn't possible to have a meaningful debate. So what we've decided to do is have it be a bit more of a uh, timed and uh, facilitated one-way exchange where candidates will provide their insight and input on uh, various topics. This is open to anybody. So if you're on the call and you want to forward it to somebody that uh, didn't get the invite earlier, please feel free to do so. Just so you're aware, our riding, Ward 11, actually had 14 candidates register through the city. Two have dropped out, uh, which means there are 12 remaining candidates. Eight candidates are actually on the line right now <laughs> for this call, which means Four of them, we have no idea how to get in touch with them. We've, um, they don't, through the registration website, which is what we used as the official uh, communication vehicle, they don't have an email, a phone number, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything. So all of the candidates that are on the, on the line right now at least have taken the initiative to have some way of uh, having the public communicate with them. In terms of candidates, in alphabetical order, we've got, maybe if you wanna wave your hand here, we've got Alex Arvazu. Exactly. Uh, Robin Buxton Potts. Norm Deepak Squally. Is Norm there? Yeah. Uh, Adam Golding. Andrew Lehman. Peter Lovering. Can Peter hear us? Yeah. There you go. Diane Sachs and Pierre Terrien. Hi. Um, um, and we apologize to the other four candidates that aren't included. They may be on as guests right now in the audience, but uh, uh, unfortunately we don't have any way to include them at this time. But if you uh, go to the website that was included in the um, invite that you were sent, you'll see the other four candidates. And if there's a way to reach out to them, please feel free to do so. So I'll try and keep things moving along. If we each candidate has um, a couple of minutes, three minutes for the first two sessions and two minutes for the next two sessions to, uh, to provide their comments. When the time runs out, we'll ask, they wrap things up if they, continue to talk, we'll have to uh, mute them. So we have the omnis omni omnipotent power to, uh, to mute people, unlike maybe a live debate. So and just in terms of the uh, agenda, we'll start off with a three minute candidate introduction in alphabetical order uh, by surname. Then we'll be doing objectives and priorities for candidates for the first 100 days and first year, and also how they'll work with the existing city council and mayor. That'll be in reverse speaking order by surname. Um, candidate term achievements. So what will their legacy be at the end of the term? Two minutes in alphabetical order. And then last in reverse alphabetical order, we'll have summaries and clo closing remarks. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, get started. Um, and uh, so what I'll ask is if Axel can um, kick things off and uh, are you ready, Axel? Yes. Great. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Axel Arvizu. Uh, I have worked in the community since I was in my early 20s. I founded a non for profit organization when I was 23 to help newcomers establish themselves in the community. I work with the Canadian Youth Business Foundation uh, to help young entrepreneurs 
I uh, started their own business. Uh, currently, I am the founder and principal of a, of a home building company that specializes in alternative housing. I also started a food manufacturing and distribution company almost 20 years ago in this world at Kensington Market. Uh, but most importantly, I am your neighbor. I live, I work, and I play in this community. Uh, I decided to run because three years ago, uh, my wife and I and I had plane tickets in hand to move to Calgary. We were essentially being driven out of our own city by the housing crisis. Um, and we, unfortunately, the pandemic hit. Uh, WestJet canceled our flights. Uh, so we decided uh, we decided to stay close to our families and because we love the city. Uh, fast forward to today, I have a one-year-old son whose name is Jack and, and another one in the way. Uh, and I want to do everything in my power to provide us and, and next generation opportunities where we don't have to be displaced out of Toronto, but we can live, we can prosper, we can raise our families and have a better sense of safety and community. I am not a conservative, I am not a liberal, I am not a politician. I'm not chasing a job because I didn't get elected in the last elections. Uh, what I am is I am a business oriented person with a track record experience in the private and the public sector with the drive and the determination to steer the city in the right direction. Uh, I think we are tired of carry politicians that love the perks and the fame of holding office, but don't do anything after. We need leaders that are in love with people and the environment. I believe I am that person and I hope you give me the opportunity to work for you and work with you as your city councillor. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much, Axel. Appreciate that. And especially appreciate you wrapping up with a little extra time. Um, what I'd like to do now is ask uh, Robin Buxton Potts to uh, provide her uh, introductory comments. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Robin Buxton Potts, and I'm running to be the next city councillor here in University Rosedale. I have over a decade of experience working um, in cities, about cities. Um, I've worked for four different city councillors under the last two mayors, including Adam Vaughn, Joe Cressy, and most recently, I was Kristen Wong Tam's chief of staff. Um, in June, I was appointed to replace Kristen Wong Tam on council when she ran provincially. Based on my experience, my knowledge of City Hall, and my ability to work very well with this existing administration and city staff and really get to work getting things done. I believe that this city requires that kind of experience. We're losing all three of the downtown councillors, not just your current councillor, taking with them decades of experience and knowledge. At a point in time where the city is facing some really big crises, whether it's navigating the Ontario line work and the traffic that that's going to contribute, the amount of development, the climate crisis, all of these issues are intersecting and need someone who can get started right away. While I don't live in Ward 11, I do live just outside of it. I live in affordable co-op housing at Broadview and Mortimer. I live in a co-op that my family started in 1994. And I always talk about sort of hitting the housing jackpot because I have affordable, stable rental housing. I have lived in the ward before, but I actually can't afford to do so um, in a space that's comparable to what I have now. And I'd like to change that and make it easier for people to be able to live in the neighborhoods that they actually work in. I've done a lot in the city to help make it better. I've helped navigate and um, help communities revitalize about a dozen parks across Ward 11. I was part of the team that helped build the Bloor Street bike lanes um, about 10 years ago where I worked directly with residents and the businesses to understand what their opposition to it was, how we could make it better, do a block by block design review and really make it so that it is something that is central to the success of that neighborhood. Now those residents and businesses are some of the biggest defenders of it. It's made our roads safer. It's actually made traffic better because it's taken a number of cars off the road. Those are the kinds of things that I wanna to continue to work on uh, as your city councilor and my ability to get started right away. Thanks so much. Great, well, thank you very much, Robin. Appreciate your comments and also finishing up early. Uh, what I'd like to do is ask if uh, Norm De Pasquale can uh, maybe provide his introductory remarks. Thank you, Michael. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Norm DePasquale, and I'm running to be your next city councillor. I got my start working on city issues 10 years ago as an advocate. I became chair of No Jets TO, and we fought against the Jets at the Island Airport and their desire to pave the lake for Jets, and built a broad-based coalition across the city, and then we won the fight. From there, I was a founding member of Ontario Place for All, and so far we have managed to save the Cinesphere, the Pods, and Trillium Park from destruction. After that, I became an elected school board trustee um, and uh, built a park, uh, helped to build a park over at Markham and Palmerston Square uh, with the councillor, councillor Mike Layton. Uh, using uh, school land and city funding, we unlocked a parkette that is so popular that we're going to need to upgrade it very soon into the next uh, uh, council. I also helped to raise the bar on equity at our school board and um, increase student and staff safety as we navigated a hundred year pandemic. I have seen the state of the city and we need to do better. Services are not working for residents. Toronto is as unaffordable as ever. Roads are not as safe as they need to be and we're still lacking the meaningful climate action that will make us a world leader. There are solutions out there to what is ailing the city and they require someone who will have the energy and the ability to fight for what is right. This is a key part of my motivation to run in this election. We can't continue to accept the status quo. I live just south of the ward. As a renter, I unfortunately was unable to find an, uh, an affordable place for my family to live in Ward 11 after I was rent evicted. When I was searching, I was lucky to find something close by. I appreciate that many have concerns about the ability of someone who doesn't live in the exact area, but I've been an elected official representing University of Rosedale for the last four years as a school board trustee. I assure you the issues that we're facing as a city, um, the major issues you have identified don't end at Dundas Street West. I am running because I think I can best interest, best represent the interests of residents at City Hall. I fully respect you if you don't think my path platform speaks to you, but my efficacy is not limited by my address. For example, I don't currently live on the waterfront, but as chair of No Jets TO and founding member of Ontario Place for All, I will still fight to preserve the waterfront because I believe in a clean green waterfront for all. And I will bring this same passion to City Hall. I look forward to the discussion tonight. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Norm. Appreciate your comments and finishing up early. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Adam Golding now uh, to provide his comments. Adam? Adam, you're muted. There we go. There we go. Yeah, we had to have the the um, host ask me to unmute. <laughs> Pleasure to see you all. I've been looking forward to all of these debates, especially our final debate, the final showdown. Um, a lot of the folks in the in the audience might not know everything we've said before. I was born in Toronto. My parents met here. I was born in this ward. Um, I had to grow up in Barrie because my father, who was a uh, high school teacher here, he died of lung cancer. And I was raised by my grandfather, who was a former Toronto police officer. And uh, my uncle Neil was also shot in the line of duty and survived. So I understand the situation of police, but I'm a defund by 50% candidate, as are all of the Socialist Alliance candidates, a team that we have started to work against Team Tory. Um, as you can see here, I support free transit. We need to tax vacancies exponentially. We have 26,000 vacancies and 10,000 homeless people. That's unconscionable. Uh, you can't see this here. Tax big business and fund the arts. And I already mentioned defunding the police. Um, you know, um, my mother also lived in Rochdale College. And so I had a twin uh, influences of sort of order and chaos, I guess, growing up. And I'm prepared to integrate those perspectives and solve the conflicts we have. We have a crisis of authoritarianism in Toronto. It began with kicking the hippies out of Yorkville in the 60s, the raid of Rochdale in 1975, the bathhouse raids, uh, the G20. And then under John Tory, we had the dispensary raids. Also, that was Tracy Cook's uh, doing and uh, aspects of lockdown that everyone agrees with. And certainly we don't agree with the violent encampment evictions that happened last summer under the watch of John Tory. And uh, we cannot uh, relocate people arbitrarily. No one should be evicted from a park without mutual consent. Uh, this is something you've also heard from mayoral candidate Gil Penalosa under the influence of Dana Chan McNally, who's who I really wanted to run for mayor. <laughs> At any rate, uh, it's a pleasure to see you all. We have to do something to stop the violence in our city. And some of it is being committed by the police in the name of, oh, we have to clean up our parks. We got to clean up our act. Great. Well, Adam, thank you very much for, for your comments and uh, your uh, wrapping up early. I'd like to uh, now ask Andrew Lehman to provide his input. Andrew? 
Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Lehman. For the past seven years, I've lived with my husband, Matt, in University Rosedale. I love my neighborhood and our city. I'm not a career politician, and I believe that's a good thing. I'm a business professional with nearly a decade of experience in people leadership and human resources. I'm also a proud first-generation university graduate, holding a bachelor's degree in sociology and criminology and a graduate certificate in mental health. I'm not running because I need this job. I'm running because I wanna make this city a better place for everyone. I'm running because I believe we need a strong voice to stand up to power and to challenge a room full of yes people who may not always have our best interest at heart. Considering my professional experience, educational background, and my courage to speak up when everyone else chooses to remain silent makes me uniquely qualified for this position. Ward 11, as we know, has one of the most diverse ranges of constituents, arguably throughout Toronto or even Canada. As a people leader and human resources professional for the past decade, I know how to bring people together, build consensus, and get things done. I've decided to run in Ward 11 because this is my home, and I should be held accountable to you, the voters. I need to be able to look my neighbors in the eye and know that I did a good job for them. At the end of the day, I don't get to sign off the job and go home. I choose to live where I serve. I see City Council not as a consolation prize like some of my candidate colleagues who were unsuccessful at the federal or provincial level, but instead as the best way to make an impact on the lives of everyday people, your everyday laymans. I see municipal politics and city council as a vehicle to make real change that impacts my neighbors, friends, and family. Thank you. Great, Andrew, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your comments and uh, you're wrapping up early. We're making great time here. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Peter Lovering to provide his uh, opening remarks. Peter. Hello, my name is, hello, my name is Peter Lovering. I am a resident of North Rosedale. And how did we get here? I really have to ask sometimes. When I was watching the people registering through the summer, I couldn't help but feel like nobody was saying what I was feeling and what people I was talking to for the last three or four years were feeling. And what I felt that people were feeling and what I was hearing is that people had lost faith in the city. Uh, they had lost faith in the city services and the, the life they're leading. And you know, there's radio stations advertising to live a better life somewhere else. And I thought that needs to change. Somebody has to say something. So having a background in business, I've been working very closely with the community uh, in a variety of different ways. I publish a community newspaper. I have my own business. It's more of a creative business. I felt that my ideas would really take root. And when I started knocking on doors, I realized I was right on the money. I started with an idea of believing in Toronto, changing the mindset of the city and trying to get things turned around. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but I would call it the incremental city. Incrementally, we've allowed the city to lose its curb appeal. I think incrementally, we can turn this city around little bit by little bit by little bit course, there's huge issues that need to be dealt with. I think we all agree with them from all the debates. We're pretty much all on the same side. But the incremental city is about fixing the little stuff, the things outside your front door, the things we see every day, and the death by a thousand, stopping that death by a thousand cuts that we feel that the city has become. And that feeling that believing in Toronto that's my goal. That's why I decided to run. And that's ultimately what I would like to do as your counselor. And I will be asking for your vote on October 24th. And my name is Peter Lovering. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate you um, going under time. I'd like to turn it over to Diane Sachs to provide her opening remarks. Diane. Thank you to everyone who made tonight possible. 
I am your most experienced, most well-rounded candidate. I am a highly decorated lawyer with two PhDs and a lifelong commitment to the public good. I was the last environmental commissioner of Ontario, unanimously appointed by all MPPs to tell the truth. I'm running for council because I have grandchildren in order to give young people a better future. I will champion climate action, affordable housing, safe, quiet streets, and keeping the city in good repair. You can learn about my experience, my platform, my character at votefordiane.ca. It includes dozens of endorsements I've received from people of all walks of life and all political backgrounds. You can also learn about my uh, lifetime of deep roots and wide networks in University of Rosedale since I was born here. This is my community. I have earned awards, degrees, and endorsements because I have integrity and energy. I get hard things done, and I inspire others to do the same. I know how government works and business and law. Instead of simplistic slogans and unfunded promises, I'll take pragmatic leadership, good judgment, an ethical compass, and deep practical experience into the real world of nuance, complexity, and economics. That's why cities all over Ontario have hired me to help them solve difficult problems. That's why the Association of Municipalities of Ontario hired me when the blue box system was at an impasse. That's why the Climate Caucus of mayors and councillors prized my advice. And that's why Mike Layton asked me to set up a Climate Act, a committee of sustainability experts of Toronto's universities to advise the members of city council. I get results because I understand what makes hard things hard and how to find common ground, because I put outcomes ahead of my own ego, and because I work effectively with people with whom I disagree. Unlike the other major candidate, I'm independent. I'm not put forward by any partisan political machine. I'm on leave from the Green Party of Ontario, for whom I ran in the spring, and I will resign my position with them if elected to council. If you want a powerful, honest, independent voice for University of Rosedale, vote Diane. Details at votefordiane.ca. Great, thank you very much, Diane. We welcome your comments. Um, I'd now like to turn it over to Pierre Terrien to uh, provide his opening remarks. Pierre? Hi there, I'm Pierre Terrien. I'm a retired authorized nuclear operator and I do not live in Ward 11. I live at Bathurst Key now and I intend to move in Rosedale in a few months. I do know something of Ward 11 as I worked and lived in Ward 11 in the 1980s. Ontario Hydro Place, the McDonald Block, the University of Toronto and others. Ward 11 is the center of Canadian society and my eyes have always been upon it. The most important issues our society faces are hammered out here. I have watched this ward and Toronto, Ontario politics my whole life. I've read books about its history and watched events as I could from afar. Because of my work, I could not live in Ward 11. Over the decades, I have explored Ward 11 many times by bike and by car. I've come here, from the cent to, I've come here to the center of our society because I have a few new ideas to share with you about climate change and how our society can recover out of conservative populism and the pandemic, and also the state of our underfunded nuclear facilities, a situation which I will bring to the provincial legislature, but I can only do that with the public's help. I have sound reasoning that will solve Ward 11's problems and all of the problems that our society faces going forward. Conservative populism has destroyed much of the fabric of Ontario society, cutting taxes by downloading provincial costs onto municipalities and has directly led to tattered roads and 10,000 homeless wandering Toronto streets. Populism is a political approach that strives to appeal to ordinary people who feel their concerns are disregarded by established elite groups. This is the big lie. The idea that the little guy is being harmed by elites this sows division. What do I know about Toronto Council? I will tell you my plan. I have been paying attention. I have long desired to enter Toronto and Ontario politics, and I have been working out my career in nuclear energy while I patiently waited to do so. Last fall, I recognized this opportunity to enter municipal politics, that a municipal election will occur this fall, followed by a liberal leadership contest. If I win my climate change mandate in Ward 11, 
I will learn municipal politics at the committee level while becoming intimately familiar with Ward 11 issues. I will seek nomination for Liberal Party leader where I will attempt to unite the left. Three parties, the Liberals, the NDP, and the Green Party possess the same ideology and can be united with my leadership because I can satisfy the needs of all three parties. Thanks, Pierre Terrian. Thank you for your comments, Pierre, and appreciate you uh, buying us a little bit of time. Uh, what I'd like to do is move on to the second uh, part of our agenda this evening. Uh, we wanted to have the candidates drill down a little bit more on their objectives and priorities. We've got three minutes each. We'll do it in reverse order, but specifically we'd like them to focus on what are you gonna do in the first 100 days and the first year of your candidacy? And how will you work with city council, in particular, um, the current mayor, who seems to be, we again, there's an election to determine this, but it looks like he may be winning again. So with that in mind, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Pierre to uh, uh, provide uh, his comments. Pierre? Thank you. Thanks for having me. My name is Pierre Terrian. And I will explain why I will make an effective leader and talk about my experience. As an authorized nuclear operator, my training in simulators has involved real-time decision-making while being placed in situations that are unfamiliar and new to the candidate. ANLs are relicensed every five years, so the testing and retesting is continuous. I have led teams countless times to solve imminent catastrophes in a team training environment real-time events requiring problem solving and thinking up new solutions to unusual and unforeseen problems are routinely dealt with. ANOs are trained to create team briefs where I as the leader is expected at any time the team has gone off track to initiate a team brief where the leader is expected to ensure the team's on track and of their bag. It's B-A-G, B for where have we been, a is where are we, and G is where are we going. I see my job as a politician as one where we will have to answer these questions for our society when I am wrong, and I will be wrong. I routinely accept coaching from those training me and my team members. A true leader knows that it's not about who is right, but about what is right. I know the logic of our can-do reactors, which gave me the confidence to operate them. I also know the logic and reasoning of our society, and I can speak effectively to solve our problems. I have led teams numerous times to deal with actual process failures at a large commercial nuclear power reactor. I have demonstrated confidence and courage to face down actual complicated issues in real time and ensure the continued safe operation of the largest commercial nuclear reactors humanity possesses. I have always been bold and my thoughts provocative. I can deliver our people what they need, direction. We need to think of our bag, and remember where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Where we've been, conservative populism has shredded the fabric of our society. Downloading of provincial costs onto municipalities has gutted every social program. Where are we? The city is in shambles. It's broke, services are being cut. Finding efficiencies have gutted every social program we have. We can't even fill potholes. 10,000 homeless wander the streets. That's not, that's 10,000 non-productive humans that these other candidates want you to believe will always live on the streets. Where are we going? I advocate Toronto needs $100 million immediately to deal with the homeless crisis and $2 billion in federal funds to balance our budget Toronto's budget and transform Toronto from a COVID victim into an example of post-COVID leadership. Commerce streets, zero gridlock, free transit, care for the homeless, and a friendlier, more open society of peace. Thanks. Thank you, Pierre, for your, uh, your comments and uh, being on time. I'd like to turn it over to Diane, please. On every file, I'll be relentlessly focused on what will make real progress on the ground. What can be done in the first 100 days depends mostly on what city staff have ready to go. Two outstanding examples on housing are the rooming house bylaw and the missing middle bylaw. They can both be passed in 100 days. They're both essential to increase the supply of affordable housing 
And both have been based on ample evidence and consultation. All that's missing is political will. On road safety, three things that can be done in 100 days is to make permanent the Young Street bike lane, to accelerate the road safety study for Avenue Road, and to get more speed cameras need schools so to make it safer for kids to walk and bike to school. Priorities that may take the first year include negotiating with developers for better contributions to the public realm, putting through the city's new carbon budget and funding for Transform TO, and updating the city's shareholder direction to Toronto Hydro, which is embarrassingly out of date. It's ridiculous that Toronto Hydro only has nine EV charging stations and light poles in the whole city, leaving people without their own driveways, no way to charge an electric car. How will I cooperate with the mayor and council? I'm so glad you asked about this because it's one of the key differences between me and the others. It's a prerequisite for getting real things done. I'm a trained and experienced mediator. I've got a lifetime of practical experience in finding common ground and building effective relationships with people of differing views. I have worked for and against virtually all the stakeholder groups that the city has to deal with. I understand their language and their needs and I'm skilled at translating between them. That's how I was able to achieve the support, the respect, the cooperation of all political parties when I was the Environmental Commissioner of Ontario. And I know I have the respect of the mayor and many candidates for council. It's easier for an independent like me to build trust with people across the political spectrum than it is for someone from a partisan political machine. And that's why I've been nonpartisan most of my life. In terms of what I've done on a, with a team and a board, I'd like to talk about Evergreen. For 15 years, I was a board member and often secretary of Evergreen, and I helped it grow from a tiny charity to a $20 million a year social enterprise. And in particular, I was a key part of the team that helped create the totally awesome community space at the Brickworks. And that included uh, negotiating the framework agreement with the City of Toronto and the Toronto Region Conservation Authority in light of the major challenges from this site after 100 years of industrial use in a floodplain. And as a result, Evergreen transformed a collection of deteriorating heritage buildings into a global showcase for green design. It's an award-winning public space. It welcomes 500,000 visitors a year. It hosts public markets, conferences, weddings, outdoor learning, nature play, and public art in the heart of Toronto's ravine system and I'm very proud to have helped make it happen. Great, thank you very much for your, your um, overview, Diane. I'd like to turn it over to Peter Lovering now. Peter? Peter, you're muted. How do you tell him? Peter, you're muted. Your microphone is muted. <laughs> Peter, your microphone's muted. If you could just uh, click accept and uh, press uh, restart, that would be great. I think you're still muted. Peter, you're muted. My whole campaign started and begins with the cleaner, safer, more efficient city. As it pertains to what I would like to accomplish, I'm the only candidate who has suggested that maybe, just maybe, our Young Street bike lane was put in improperly. I think it needs to be addressed. I think we need to focus on it. And I think that is something that will be happening the next uh, in the next, in the first hundred days. Quite frankly, I think there's something that's called road balance that I'm working on, and that's finding a sensible balance for everybody on the roadways. It's not necessarily bike lanes everywhere throughout the city. They can't be on every arterial lane. So that's one thing I think is going to be starting right out of the gate in the first hundred days. Of course, we talk about rezoning and rezoning for neighborhoods and gentle density and all those things. I'm very careful about the density uh, topic, especially when it pertains to our, our communities and our neighborhoods. 
remember these are the neighborhoods that were hard fought for and and basically saved the city when we stopped the expressways back in the 70s these neighborhoods are a result of all that hard work back in the 70s and now we're at risk of destroying the last vestige of them so i'd be very conscious of having a a sensible approach, a curated approach to that density to ensure that the heritage and the culture of these neighborhoods, which are shared by, although they're shared by many, these are these are beautiful areas for people to walk and have recreation, ride their bikes and do that sort of thing. I also think the, the valleys are very important and that's something we may not have the talk, time to talk about. On the Working with the mayor side, I think that is the job of the councillors to work with the mayor. Uh, I think whoever the mayor is, you need to work with them. On the side of the on the side of working as a team, coming from a creative background and running a creative business, the very idea of creativity is working as a team. And I think in the political sphere, and having worked at a councillor's office, I've seen it firsthand where people come with their predefined agendas. They already believe what the answer is, and there is no solution other than their answer. That's not the creative way to solve, solve problems. I would bring a creative way to solve problems to council and work across every aisle and to find the best idea and get the best result possible. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh for your comments, Peter. I'd like to turn it over to uh, Andrew Lehman now for his remarks. Andrew. Thank you. Um, I want to make housing more affordable, our roads more shareable, our streets safer, and our communities more vibrant and accessible for everyone. In my first 100 days, I believe we need to start with a deep level review of our city's budgets. We have so much leakage, and I don't trust that we've stayed as close to our budgets and spending that we should have. As councillor, I will review the budgets in depth in my first 100 days, find efficiencies and money leakage and rectify the situation. Once we have a realistic idea of where we are and how we spend our money, we can actually work towards reinvesting our budget towards things that matter to our constituents. I will also set out countless meetings with our constituents to make sure I understand every aspect of what their needs are and find solutions collaboratively alongside of them. In my first year, I want to make housing more affordable. We have 26,000 units that sit vacant in the city of Toronto and less than 10,000 people experiencing homelessness. I will implement a vacancy tax in my first year for any home that sits empty for more than six months. We need to increase the supply of housing to lower the cost of housing for our constituents. I would also work to eliminate the red tape surrounding garden suite and laneway homes. I'll also work to end exclusionary zoning and will leverage city owned land to make affordable and deeply affordable housing units. For safe and shareable roads is my second priority within that year. I would roll out a program centered around re-educating motor vehicleists and cyclists on road safety laws. Motor vehicleists need to obey the rules of the road, but so should we as cyclists. No more riding on sidewalks, cycling through stop signs and red lights and going 45 kilometers an hour down busy streets. To help make our roads more shareable, I would also invest in more cycling infrastructure. Leveraging our one-way streets with counterflow bike lanes, implement more X crossing walks to support pedestrian safety, and consider lowering some speed limits on danger streets to 30 kilometers. For accessibility and vibrancy, I would also implement wider sidewalks that are 2.1 meters in width, implement more ramps so that our aging population and people with disabilities can fully participate in society, and increase the amount of public washrooms maintained year-round. We are all taxpayers, and we should not be reliant on private businesses behind dumpsters or people's front lawns to alleviate ourselves. We're supposed to be a world-class city. How will I work with the mayor? As a human resources professional, I'm expected and have demonstrated time and time again that I can work with everyone. And it starts by listening. I believe we need to find difficult, we need to have difficult conversations and speak with those we disagree with to find common sense solutions that work. We cannot continue to allow ourselves to be triggered by people's political affiliations or beliefs to the point where we cannot get things done. Um, I have sat on a number of committees throughout my career, particularly our Pride Alliance Committee as a national treasure, where I've supported LGBTQ plus members and our Black Employee Network as national communications lead. I understand how to advocate and influence for budget and how to bring people along on the journey to get things done. Thank you. Thanks very much for your remarks, Andrew. 
and being on time, I'd like to turn it over to Adam Golding, please. Adam? All right, here's what we do. We are in a housing crisis. We declared the first state of emergency in Toronto's history over COVID, and we recently declared it over, but the emergency is not over. We must redeclare the state of emergency because of the housing crisis. And at the same time, we have to give Khalil Sabright the key to the city and name him a COVID hero. He erected tiny structures to save people's lives with the skills that he had available himself during that state of emergency. And you would think a state of emergency means everyone should pitch in and help out and take you know, a, a bit of initiative themselves. But he was punished publicly by John Tory, published by Tory for helping. And that was so psychologically corrosive, I knew I had to focus my research on the local Toronto level. Um, so we have to have a daily meeting, just like with COVID, about the housing crisis and the opioid crisis. Um, that's why we need to decriminalize all drugs. I'm sure you understand how those two are related. We have to ban the mass evictions that Diane Sachs supports that happened in the parks last summer. I was personally harmed along with many other good people that day. Uh, three of the candidates in the Socialist Alliance were arrested at Lamport too and are all running for government. Uh, that tells you that something is amiss. And actually only two of the incumbents running voted for a judicial inquiry into that, that clearing. Um, Diane Sachs also opposes that judicial inquiry. The only, those incumbents are Gord Perks and Matt Lowe, who I endorse. I oppose all of the other incumbents on council. That's the only way to end the authoritarian grip of Team Tory. Uh, and we need to start indexing benefits to inflation, even if they're modest to start to get that concept in our brains. It's what they do in Quebec. Uh, those are the top priorities, along with reducing the police budget, which is linked to this, because we're spending money, we have to fire logic security, fire star security, and uh, start taking officers off of gun duty. They don't need to spend that much time walking around with guns on. Um, response time is where we need people, so we need to put more people on, on, on the, the, res the response side of things. People showing up in camps cannot help response time, it's not related. <clears throat> and the, so I just want to reiterate that we have to double the vacancy tax monthly. Uh, rent control, by the way, we have to reach across the aisle and use a bit of the conservative plan. We should keep scrapping rent control and unit, new units, but only if it doesn't displace functional units by demolishing them. I would call that the if it ain't broke, don't fix it principle. So we have to tweak the conservative rent control exemption and, of course, pass Jessica Bell's Rent Stabilization Act and end vacancy decontrol to stop the bleeding with the uh, encampment crisis and start building mental health treatment facilities. So I could go on, but that's where we have to start and hold that judicial inquiry. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate your comments. I'd like to now turn it over to Norm Di Pasquale for uh, his uh, comments. Thank Norm? you, Mike. In the first 100 days, I will work to reestablish the working relationship between the Councillor's Office and resident associations. My number one priority is listening to you. I'm a consensus builder, and we can only achieve success when we work together to build healthy neighborhoods. This includes convening, reconvening the five resident association group meetings started by Councillor Layton and the Ravine Working Group to support Ravine improvements. With the support and endorsement of Councillor Layton, I can get to work quickly on the priorities that matter to residents in the Rosedale area. There are also many requests and reports asked of staff from the last term of council that have not been reported back on. We need to ensure that we get touch base on these, restart these so we don't lose progress on issues, on critical issues like the housing crisis, Transform TO, the Ravine strategy and the Don Valley layover. I wanna see substantial progress on all of these issues by the end of year one. We'll also be setting up our first budget and we need to hold the mayor accountable to include local voices in the decision-making. We need to ensure council is setting a budget that meets the needs of residents and provides services that actually work. Uh, with respect to consensus, I've been a school board trustee for the last four years in University of Rosedale, and I've worked with various members of council, other levels of government, and trustees on the right, center, and left to get things done for our students. I can work with people across the political spectrum, including whoever is elected mayor, but I'm not afraid to stand up for what is right for Ward 11 residents. I'm the chair of No Jets TO, and I've worked alongside an amazing team of dedicated volunteers to organize a broad set of stakeholders to unite against a common cause to protect their neighborhood. It was about building a broad-based coalition. I will bring that exact same approach to City Hall. I'm also a founding member of Ontario Place for All and a former board member of Waterfront for All as we work towards protecting our waterfront, saving the Cinesphere and Trillium Pods as well as um, Trillium Park from destru destruction. And I'm currently working to protect spaces in Ontario Place from private interests. Thank you. Thanks very much, Norm. 
Um, I'd like to turn it over to Robin Buxton Potts now. Robin. Thank you very much. Um, within the first 100 days, getting the office up and running has to be the biggest priority. This job is essentially a customer service role. And so making sure that that office is set up to serve residents right away is the biggest priority. I have spoken to Councillor Layton. He has assured me that he would work collaboratively with me should I be successful to get those relationships handed over, the projects handed over, and I look forward to doing that. Some of those things include meetings with the BIAs, the residents associations to understand what the existing projects and priorities are. I'd also launch something called the University Rosedale Projects, which is an interactive and participatory platform for budgeting our priorities, for bringing new ideas into the office where residents can see transparently and vote on things that are important to them. In the first 100 days, we also need to have a vote on the new strong mayor powers. The legislation is requires us to have that vote um, and decide whether or not we want to accept those powers. If we're talking about making sure we have strong oversight of the budget, we need to have that vote and we need to reject those strong mayor powers. Within year one would really look to making sure that the neighborhood projects that have been on the books for as long as they have get brought back up to the top of the priority list. That includes secondary plans, the heritage districts in Kensington Market, neighborhood traffic studies, all of the things that you have been waiting patiently to see done will get back on the agenda at the top. I have a strong working relationship with Mayor Tory's team. I was supported by the mayor, his entire executive team, and all but one of city councillors when I was appointed to city council in June because of my ability to work well with them and across the political line. I will be firm in my values. Um, I have challenged the mayor on a number of things like where I don't think that he has done enough on things like road racing and noise, on finding housing for people living in encampments, um, and our long-term financial planning. I didn't think he has been honest with residents about Toronto, about what we need to actually make a city that we want. In terms of things that I have done as a strong team player that I'm really proud of, was the most recent vaccine um, rollout. Our office worked very closely with the mayor's team to make sure that residents in Ward 13 had access to vaccines. We launched the very first text-based uh, vaccine appointment program across the country. We were successful in bringing up the vaccine rates in our vulnerable communities. Creative ideas, strong leadership and dedication and having new ideas and energy and not just accepting the status quo is what I would bring and the experience to deliver it. Great, thank you very much, Robin, for your comments. And uh, last but not least, we'd like to uh, ask Axel to provide his uh, insights. Axel? Thank you. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, my priority is being there for you. I will always make time to talk, call back, write back, answer any of your questions and concerns. Um, I will have an open door policy. Uh, and I will also do the work. Uh, what I see as the three biggest issues facing the city, uh, this ward are housing affordability, transit and alternative means of transportation and community rehabilitation and safety. It is a lot to unpack in a few minutes, but in a short summary, uh, my objectives are to end exclusionary zoning, ease apartment conversions, legalize rooming housing, advocate for density through laneway houses and garden suites, fix city management inefficiencies, address issues of favoritism and corruption at City Hall, continue transit expansion, increase transit service, push for the amalgamation of VRL, Metrolinx, and the TTC. Uh, I will expand the seating, uh, cycling lanes and make them safer. I also wanna shift resources to community programs, mental health, and shelters that also provide structural supports that stay with people and create opportunities for them. I am a doer and I'm not scared to roll up my sleeves and pick up a shovel. Having worked in the private and the public sector, I have a good sense of finding common ground with people and getting things done efficiently. I have brought up community issues and sat down with, at the time, uh, Mayor, Mayor of Toronto, David Miller. I have sat down on committees and panels to advise foreign workers, foreign, foreign governments on issues facing their communities living abroad. I have sat 
on table discussions with Prime Minister at the time, Stephen Harper, to advise on young entrepreneurship issues. And I have met with and talked one-on-one -on -one with now King Charles as a representative of Canada to discuss issues newcomers face. I know I can make a difference at City Hall, and I hope you give me the opportunity to proudly represent you. Great, thank you very much for your comments, Axel. Uh, well, that concludes the second part of our agenda this evening. Um, moving on to the third part, it's really, if you get elected, what can we expect from you in your first term? So a lot of the things you talked about, there was a laund quite a laundry list of activities, but what we're looking for are the two to three items that uh, we can count on you to get done. Uh, and maybe also how exactly you're going to make that happen. If you look at recent articles about Meritori, with all due respect, he's had a lot of balls in the air, but at the end of his eight years, you know, I would challenge people to be consistent on what is it that he's achieved other than consensus in, in City Hall and uh, maybe a bit more uh, collaboration working as a team overall. So with that in mind, I'd like to turn it over to um, the candidates, two minutes each, starting with Axel Arvizu. Axel? Yes, thank you again. Uh, my plan is not to get to work on day one. My plan is to get to work on the very same day the elections announce, are announced um, with the results. And I'll be reaching out to the current councillor about the continuity of projects that have already begun. My objectives are ambitious, uh, but I also wanna make sure I do the small things that matter, like installing a soccer field in some of these neighborhood parks. I ran into kids and parents that have said to me they can't afford the hockey gear uh, to play at the skating rink. But if they had a couple of nets, they could start a local soccer tournament and soccer, soccer is the most international sport there is. So I wanna make good on that promise. More ambitiously, I wanna be a champion for the expansion of transit, but most importantly to me, the cycling infrastructure as an alternative mean of transportation. What we have now is a start, but it's also antiquated and unsafe. I will expand the bike lanes using better design principles that respond to the cycling needs of the city. I want to create an infrastructure that that is high quality, that is safe, but also creates foundations for systemic and lasting changes that encourage a culture of cycling. Public, public transit and cycling infrastructure is what's gonna allow parents to come home to their children earlier from work and have a better life balance. My plan is to stay as counselor working for you for as long as you allow me. And at the end of my term, my legacy will be that my children and my grandchildren will be able to say they can afford to buy a home in Toronto and stay close to their families because we made it affordable and attainable for everyone. I will also show people that even as a person that doesn't come from money or doesn't have Trudeau for, or, or Leighton as a last name, you're able to make a difference in shaping the fabric of society and influence, a good, an influence for good the very place we live in. Great. Thanks very much, Axel, for your, your comments. Um, over to Robin Buxton Potts. Robin? Thank you. I think what we've seen over the last eight years is um, some relief after the four years of Ford that things got a little bit calmer. But what I think we have seen is a progressively worse state of our city. So at the end of my first term, I want to make meaningful and noticeable progress on financial reform at the city budget level. Noticeable in that people say that services are running better and that the city feels cleaner and more responsive. Right now, we rely on 311 as a reactive measure for customer service. We need to be more proactive, but that means looking very carefully and realistically about how we fund this city. So I would like to see at the end of this first term that we've made meaningful progress on a percentage of a sales tax or an income tax from the province and that we've implemented a suite of other kinds of uh, revenue tools, whether that's a parking levy, the vehicle registration tax or an entertainment tax, all of which we could do through the Toronto Act right now. My legacy at the end of the first term, I wanna be a counselor who's known for being responsive. I am endorsed by a number of people from Ward 13 who said that in the few months that I have been counselor, I have been more responsive to them, that I listen, 
that I care about the residents and that when you contact our office, you are sure that you're going to get a response. You might not like the answer, but you will get a response and you'll get clear um, positions from me about why we can't do something or how we could do something differently. And that is what I hope to accomplish here in Ward 11. Thank you very much, Robin, for your comments. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Norm De Pasquale, please. Norm. Thank you, Michael. Uh, there is a lot going on at City Hall, and this is not all I will do, but here are five things I want to achieve. I want to implement ravine improvements each and every budget. The natural environment of the ravine around Rosedale is beautiful and we need to protect it. I want to fully fund and resource transform TO's climate change measures uh, without delay. I want to deliver on Vision Zero, so no deaths on our roads. Um, and I'd like to try to start around schools. So there is actually a, a city goal to get 75% of folks um, doing trips under five kilometers to walk and bike. So narrowing our focus down to schools, currently we have 22% of families walking and biking to school in Toronto, and we are moving backwards. When you ask parents why they're not, uh, let's say, walking or biking to schools, but they say it's because I don't feel safe, so I drive, and it creates sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy of everybody driving to school. So I want, in the current rate of funding, it would take 75 years to put safety interventions at all of our schools. I want to increase that funding and make sure that our families feel safe to walk and bike to school, and then hopefully walk and bike to work. Um, I also want to create housing to help get people uh, off the streets and encampments into housing that works for them. I want to allow single family homes to be able to house multiple families, uh, implement a vacancy home tax and make sure that inclusionary zoning passes. And lastly, the one thing I know I can achieve because it's a personal trait is build a more inclusive city hall, which includes your voices so that all everyone from Kensington Market to North Rosedale feel engaged in decision making. Great, thanks very much, Nora. Um, turn it over to Adam. All right, so um, we are going to solve the housing crisis and we're going to solve it in a way which allows us to solve the next crisis and it begins with that daily meeting that I mentioned we're not going to just have closed door meetings amongst the people who have hoarded a bit of power or opportunity about how we're going to you know keep up appearances and make it look like we're taking care of the needy we are going to talk in front of the news cameras every day, we are going to put the numbers up every day. And everyone is going to know what the game is they're going to know how many evictions were there today? How, how many people were housed today? How many people died from exposure today? The coroner general is actually not counting that right now. There was an article recently about how that needs to be counted. Yeah, everyday people in committees, right, Phil? And neighborhood votes and everything. We need to, we need to get everyone to pitch in and whatever our top problem is. I would say our top problem right now is housing and opioids. And decriminalizing drugs is part of that. And that part's easy for the people who can repeal laws to do. We can repeal the no camping bylaw, et cetera. But we have to pitch in all together you know, I, I don't care if it seems like a game show, we're gonna put the numbers on the screen every day. And that's what we're gonna do on the next crisis. We're gonna to have to agree on the metric and work together on the metric. We're not going to say, well, you know, you elected some people who said X, Y, Z, whatever our top thing is, we're gonna to have to talk about it in the media for constant transparency and record every meeting. We're gonna solve this together. And then we'll do that for the next thing. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, now turning it over to Andrew Lehman. Andrew? Thank you. In my first term as city councillor, I would have accomplished the following. I will have made housing more affordable by increasing the supply of units in, in our city. I will have accomplished this by ending exclusionary zoning, leveraging more city-owned land for the development of affordable and deeply affordable housing. I would have implemented a vacancy tax on the 26,000 units that currently sit empty and would have used that funding towards social, social housing initiatives. I would have also removed the red tape surrounding laneway and garden suite housing and removed the barriers that prevent rooming housing done legally in our city. I would have also made our streets safer and more shareable for everyone, including motor vehicleists, cyclists, and pedestrians. I would have re-educated our constituents on road safety rules. I would have also improved our road conditions so that they are safe and void of any large potholes. I would have improved and built upon our cycling infrastructure, as we currently only have 200 kilometers of bike lanes, but more than 5,400 kilometers of roadways. I would have also made smart investments in road designs that improve the efficiency, 
traffic flow and safety for our constituents. I would also have made our city more accessible and more vibrant. I would have improved upon our neighborhoods and made them more accessible, have more public washrooms that are cleaned and maintained throughout the year. I would have made our sidewalks large enough to pass by our neighbors, and we would finally have clean streets free of debris and needles. I would have also invested in culture and arts that make our city so vibrant and colorful while helping to drive in tourism. What would my legacy be after my first term? If elected, my legacy will be one that makes us proud to be Torontonians. My legacy will work to ensure that we actually live up to our title as a world-class city. Our city will be more affordable, more accessible, clean, and safe. Our ward and our city will be a better place where people can live, play, and thrive. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your comments, Andrew. Uh, I'd now like to turn it over to Peter Lovering. Peter? Thank you. I think, let's just say, at the end of a year, I would like people to feel like it's safe to go outside at night. Let's just start there and almost finish there. That's part of the cleaner, safer, more efficient type of thing. But that really trickles into the what everybody is feeling is safety. I talked to a number of people today. They're, they're afraid to go out at night. They never used to be. So how do we do that? We do that through lighting. We do that with better awareness. And we do that by taking back our own streets and being more aware of our surroundings. We have to start respecting each other, respecting the city, showing some civic pride and believing in Toronto. Now that might seem far-fetched, but if we're talking about a legacy, if the city is cleaner and the city's safer and people start just being nicer to each other, I think we're going to go a long way. With regards to with regards to city services and efficiencies, this this lack of belief that people have in the city is also felt by the people running the city services. So I think it's going to be very important for the councillor at the end of four years to feel like we're all on the same team. City services are working for us. We're, we respect city services. So that would be my big takeaway is that we all respect the people doing the hard work of running the city and those people respect us and moving forward, we're gonna have a greater civic pride and more joy and happiness in the way we deal with each other on the roads, in our parks, and everywhere we interact. That would be my goal at the end of my, my term. Thank you. Thanks very much for your comments, Peter. I'd now like to uh, turn this over to uh, Dan Sachs. Dan? Four years can make a tangible difference. And as thousands of scientists have told us, these next four years are critical to the kind of future our kids will have. Part of my legacy will be a better future for today's kids because Toronto will have cleaner air and safer streets and more affordable housing and a growing new climate economy. Wider sidewalks, better bike lanes, faster, more reliable transit will give kids safer, more independent, more active ways to get to school. They'll have more hope, more hope, less despair, because Toronto will be getting serious finally about the climate crisis instead of sticking our head in the sand. More kids will be able to live near their grandparents when we have clearer, simpler zoning rules, such as acid of right missing middle housing, which creates more flexible and affordable housing right here in University Rosedale. With less noise and filthy air from traffic, kids will be healthier, less likely to have learning disabilities or asthma, and seniors will be less likely to have dementia. Kids will have better places to play if our parks and ice rinks will be in good repair, Get a flowers again in the flower beds instead of trash. Kids will be able to go to the washroom because the public toilets will be open and they'll be able to get a drink of water when they're thirsty and they won't have to watch their city fall apart faster and faster because council won't raise the money it takes to run a city that works. A second part of my legacy will, will be to have modeled how an effective councillor actually gets stuff done, priorizing getting stuff done instead of getting personal credit. I listen first. 
I've been showered with professional success, including being named as number three in a global 50 women in sustainability just last week. I don't have anything left to prove. I've had my fair share of headlines. Instead, I'll be quietly effectively working with staff, council and stakeholders to achieve results. I have my own ideas, but I'm not arrogant about them. I'll learn from evidence and when I'm wrong, I'll do what I can to make it right. Thank you very much, Diane, for your comments. I'd like to turn it over to Pierre Therrien. Pierre? Thank you. What are my priorities? Climate change is an existential threat. Here's what I propose to do. CO2 can be removed from the biosphere for a price. That price can be related to the carbon tax. The carbon tax can thus fund CO2 removal. Humans can therefore remove CO2, more CO2 than they generate, allowing control of atmospheric CO2 concentration and hence atmospheric temperature. Climate change can be controlled. I have three priorities for the next 100 days. Number one, Toronto Council will ask for 100 million in federal government funds to create at least 4,000 temporary beds before the snow flies to begin the housing first strategy and procure 1,000 permanent beds for the homeless. Bunk beds with secure lockup, safety assured, and larger accommodations for families. Two, my mandate will ask for federal funds to conduct a three-month study examining the financial and technical aspects of my proposal to control climate change. The study will require $10 million to complete. Three, my strategy will be to learn everything I can about municipal politics at the committee level. Make no mistake, I am pandering to the people of Ward 11 to act in their best interest and rightly so, it is this, as it is the center of Ontario society. I will eventually apply for nomination for leadership of the Ontario Liberal Party and continue to advocate on behalf of the people of Ward 11. How will I cooperate with mayor and council? I am an excellent communicator in that I listen to all sides of an argument, examine each point of view and create synergistic solutions that work from every point of view which I check relentlessly. I am a professional problem solver and hence an effective leader, communicator, and listener. Thanks. Thank you, Pierre. So this uh, now allows us to move to the last part of the agenda where we're gonna have the candidates provide their closing remarks and summaries. What I would say is that it seems like there's a lot of things that everybody's gonna get done and they're all pretty similar. So I would encourage each of the candidates to make an effort to try and differentiate yourself on why we should be voting for you. Uh, this is your last kind of chance. The election uh, is next week. And I know there have been, a, there's a, I think one more debate for you folks. Uh, there was just one yesterday, but uh, why don't we kick it off with Pierre, Tarion, and uh, let's hear what you've got to say. You've got two minutes, take it away, Pierre. Thank you. I'm Pierre Therrien. I advocate for vast new federal infrastructure spending to fund these next three ideas of $100 billion each. Imagine gridlock eliminated by an underground expressway system. The Don Valley Expressway, for example, turned into a new park where there is no noise. Cars will leave Bloor Street, for example, via tunnels. And this will remove cars from city streets. Imagine a vastly improved subway system where transit is free. New subway lines to bring subway service to every corner of the city. Transit fees are a tax on the poor and carbon taxes are a tax on the rich. When carbon taxes fund transit operation, the rich fund free transit. I say pile on that carbon tax. Imagine a high-speed TGV-style rail line from Quebec City to Windsor through Ottawa with a terminal at the UAT so students and workers can live in Ottawa or Peterborough and be able to work or study in downtown Toronto. Canada is the strongest country in the G7 and has enormous power to spend our way out of this crisis. Our condo construction industry may shortly halt and we'll need federal investment to foster the, our immigration program, which puts Torontonians in an advantageous position to force developers 
to accept new rules, minimum condo sizes, improved park space, requirements for public art installation, and more. Liberal spending will avert the withering social destruction of conservative populism. There is no need for austerity. Canadians are wealthy and can afford the we to weather the economic storm with little discomfort. This is why Trudeau is asking everyone for their political shopping lists. Government infrastructure spending will make us thrive economically to recover from the pandemic and set us up for the next round of expansion. We can. We will. Vote for me. I'm Pierre Therrien. Thanks very much, Pierre, for your comments. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Diane Sachs. Diane. The Globe and Mail pointed out how badly we need serious political leaders. That is, elected officials who tell voters the truth, that governing involves hard choices, that there are no simple answers, who don't spread misinformation or promote partisan antagonism, who rise above partisan politics to achieve goals for the common good. Isn't that who you want at City Hall? After that article, and after doing his homework, a local judge came to tell me that in this sense, I am your only serious candidate. On specifics, the judge and I often disagree, but he knows he can trust my intelligence and my integrity, my experience, and my demonstrated willingness to tell the truth regardless of the personal consequences. Character tells above all, please, don't vote until you've read the endorsements on my website. Each and every one of those endorsements has been freely given. None has been extracted by a political machine. There's no quid pro quo for any of them. I am deeply honored to have earned the confidence of so many people. And the endorsements keep coming in. And I'm especially proud of the endorsement received today from Anishinaabe elder, Catherine Padubin Migizi Kwe Brooks. Catherine says, Diane has the experience and strength we need to take Toronto forward to a livable city for all of us. I think we're lucky to have her. University Rosedale is lucky to have so many decent people seeking your vote. On many topics, some of us share a vision. If you want a powerful, respected voice to actually achieve that vision, vote Diane on Monday. Thank you. Thanks very much for your comments, Diane. I'd like to turn it over to Peter Lovering now. Peter? Well, thank you for being here and thank you, Michael, for hosting this. It's very much appreciated and thank you to all the candidates. I wish we'd gotten a photo together last night at the campaign, at the live event, so we could have had that for our, for our, uh, our memories, and maybe yet we will be able to do that. That would be nice. Ultimately, the job of the city councilor is to run the city, is to be answerable to you. When I've knocked on all the doors, I've realized that you know every front porch, every door, every every window has its own view. And with that in mind, that is the thing that interests me most is talking to you daily engaging with engaging with the constituents and being a constituency counselor my creative background and working together with the community and publishing and those sorts of things have, have built this for me over the years and i am the perfect person to do that job to not just make big tough decisions but to actually engage on the little stuff to fix the little things and help people understand how the city works that is my goal that is why i'm asking for your vote and on october 24th if you'd like to see a constituency councillor who is going to put you first then you should vote for peter lumbery thank you Great, thank you very much, uh, Peter. I'd like to turn it over to um, Andrew Lehman. Andrew? Thank you. My campaign has always been about making our ward and city a better place. I've run a grassroots campaign and I haven't spent $50,000 this election cycle like many of my candidate colleagues. 
who are funded by political party members who wish to maintain the status quo. My campaign has always been about proving that your everyday layman, your everyday Torontonian, has a real shot at breaking into politics to make real change. As your next city councillor, I will encourage robust conversations around all subjects that matter most to you. What differentiates me from the other elected officials is that I won't tell you what to say, how to feel, or what matters most to you. I don't believe in cancel culture, and I won't tell you what to think, how to speak, or how to live your life. I will protect your voice from being censored and will advocate for your right to freedom of expression because diversity is our biggest strength, not conformity. As I close tonight, let me leave you with this thought. You wouldn't vote for a prime minister who doesn't live in your country, a premier who doesn't live in your province, or a mayor who does not live in your city. So why then would you vote for Norm, Diane, or Robin as your city councillors when they don't even live in your ward? I know that Norm has mentioned that he isn't running in his current ward because he doesn't want to get, run against his friend Ozma Malik, even though the current incumbent Joe Cressy has decided to step away. If you're not good enough to run where you live, Ward 11 deserves more than second best. I also know that Robin is the current interim leader in Ward 13. If you are proud of the work that you've done there and the relationships you've built, why not let voters in that ward make their decision? Vote for me, Andrew Lehman, as your first choice to make positive change together. I will be accountable to you and no one else. I will look you in the eye, be honest, and make sure I do the best that I can every single day for you, my neighbors and friends. I also want to thank all of the candidates who had the courage to run where they live. Thank you. We appreciate it. Visit andrewlayman.ca for more information or reach out at info at andrewlayman.ca. Vote Layman for your everyday layman. Thank you. Thank you for your, your comments, Andrew. I'd like to turn it over to Adam Goulding now. Adam? Hi, so um, here's what I wanna say. I feel that I'm at the sweet spot in terms of how much of an outsider I am and am not. Um, I do support my neighbors who, as Andrew so aptly put it, had the courage to run where they live. You know, Andrew gave the best closing statement last night, in my opinion, on that topic. Uh, but I do feel I have a bit more experience than my, my, my true neighbors, let's say, who aren't parachutes. Uh, I was a two-term student president at the Cognitive Science and Artificial Intelligence Students Association, Association at U of T, where I had to get very disparate groups to work together. And uh, <laughs> that's enough, Phil. Um, and we had, we had to get dis disparate groups to work together. And uh, I worked for the NDP, and I was recruited to the Pirate Party out of student politics. So uh, I have a different perspective to bring that's more focused on uh, direct democracy. And I don't take marching orders from the NDP, um, nor am I in the group think of the Green Party. In fact, I listen to all the news media. I even understand the occasional thing that a conservative says, although Pierre Polyev is just pretending not to understand modern monetary theory. But that's another story. Um, I don't feel personally that I would be represented by my opponents. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like that Diane Sachs has supported the violent encampment evictions. Uh, I don't like that Norm didn't say anything about the NDP support for ABA while he was a school board trustee and uh, NDP candidate. Uh, I did. That's why I got into trouble there, because, because the disability committee said that's child abuse. So ask me about that. Um, Pierre has good points, but he's not going to stick around. Uh, Robin is just kind of drifting in from Ward 13. And uh, I really like Axel and Andrew and Peter, and I hope that you can help me out. But I, I ask for your support in uh, leading this fight against Team Tory. Thank you for your comments, Adam. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Norm De Pasquale. Norm? Thanks everyone for tuning in and the organizers for getting this discussion set up. It's a great opportunity to share what I stand for with you. If there's one thing you take home from tonight, it is that this is not a single issue job. Residents in the area represented by the sponsoring resident associations need a well-rounded counselor will be able to use 10 years of city building experience, including as an elected school board trustee at the University of Rosedale to build consensus and organize around shared causes to enrich our communities. I believe the better is possible. We need to fix the housing crisis and address affordability. We need city services that actually work. We need to help residents embrace a greener future. I have the full support and endorsement of Councillor Layton, who will help ensure my team and I can get to work on advancing your priorities without delay and we'll get the results that we are demanding from City Hall. I hope I can count on your support on election day so we can get to work as quickly as possible together. Visit votenorm.ca to learn more about me and my platform. Thank you. Thanks very much for your comments, Norm. I'd like to turn it over to Robin Buxton-Potts, please. Robin. 
Thank you so much. When Mike announced that he wasn't running for re-election, my first concern was that we we're losing all three of the downtown councillors who've been here for about a decade. That is years of experience and knowledge about what this city um, is facing and how it works that we're losing all at once. We're about to have the Metrolinx um, Ontario line tear up Queen Street for the next 10 years. We have the highest level of development. This is where the economic development of the city is. We have parks that are in disarray. And I was worried about losing that experience. And so I called the residents associations and the BIAs that I had worked with when I worked for Adam Vaughn and Joe Cressy. And I asked them who they thought should represent this area. We brainstormed a lot of people. And I was very, very humbled when they said, actually, Robin, you know this stuff better than most people. I spent every day of the last 10 years thinking about how cities work, how we work together. I love this city and this is the level of government that I've always wanted to do. This is not a single issue job. Being a city councillor is incredibly complex and it does take a few years to get your feet under you. With three brand new councillors, the risks of our priorities being taken advantage of, being pushed to the side is very real. This is an incredibly important election. We need someone who, yes, tells the truth about what we can do, but who also stakes a position and who has a vision for this and is not willing to just say, let bygones be bygones, it's hard. Let's make hard decisions, but with a clear vision for the kind of city that we want, where we have a place where everyone who wants to live here can, where arts communities can thrive, where restaurants can thrive, and everyone gets a chance to live in a much better city. Thank you for your support. I can be reached at voterbp.ca or contact at voterbp.ca. Great, thank you very much, Robin. And uh, last but not least, Axel Arvazu. Axel? Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you for showing uh, interest in your community by being here. Uh, I wish this wasn't a virtual event and I could meet you all and shake your hand. Um, I am here because I care about where I'm going to raise my children and because like you, I am a stakeholder in what happens in this community. I live, I work, I play in this neighborhood and I promise you, this is my priority. You, you heard us all shower you with promises and boast about nomination, our nominations. Um, I ask you that you carefully look at each one of us with a microscope and that you're able to look through the big and desequalizing campaign budgets, uh, the fancy political speeches, uh, the massive amounts of propaganda and flyers uh, that I'm sure have been delivered to your doors, uh, the biased and ulterior motivated nominations and the, the blatant manipulation of political parties, especially in Ward 11. Talk is very cheap. Uh, so I hope that you judge each of us by the content of our character, our intentions as your representative and our ability to do the job. And when you do cast your vote, uh, you give me the opportunity to work for you and with you as your next city councilor. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much to all the candidates for all of your feedback. Uh, I know it's always a challenge to do this virtually, but um, I think everybody's got a much better perspective on what your backgrounds are, your values, objectives, and policies. Um, I want to thank all of the uh, people online uh, who helped to coordinate the event, as well as just uh, general attendees for participating. And I um, wanted to remind everybody that uh, these events don't happen by chance. Uh, this event was led by the North Rosedale Residents Association in conjunction with the other volunteer uh, resident associations in our area, including South Rosedale Moore Park, Governor's Bridge, Summerhill. And um, so I just wanted to make sure that all of you on the phone recognize that uh, these things don't happen without their initiative and being proactive. And if you're not a member, we'd encourage you to join. The second final comment I'd like to make is that all of this is kind of for naught unless you vote. So get out on the 24th, vote for somebody. Somebody's gonna run, uh, somebody's gonna win and become our counselor. So you might as well get your oar in the water and, uh, and at least be able to say who you voted for. 
Uh, so I encourage everybody to get out and vote. Um, I also encourage everybody to join their local resident association to um, allow these things to continue. And I'd like to thank everybody, candidates, and all of the general audience for your participation. Uh, with that, we'll draw this to a close. We'll send out uh, the link to the um, recording of the event uh, to everybody that participated through the registration process. And um, good luck in the election next week. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody.